Okay, so hi everybody. Thanks for joining part two of our sales messaging series. Last week we started with part one, which was perfecting your elevator pitch. And this week we're talking about your value proposition. And so last week we kind of got your feet wet with uh, talking about how to describe your company quickly to someone in order to pique their interest. Now we're really digging into the meat and bones of your messaging. And uh, I'll have the agenda on the next slide to show you what we're gonna do. So first, we'll start with just a quick introduction of our coaches that are on the call today. And then we'll talk about what is value, the value proposition framework, examples of that value, of value propositions, then give you some time to create your own value proposition, and then submit them for feedback. And we can do some real-time feedback from our coaching team. So first, I'm gonna have our coaches introduce themselves. Jason, you wanna go ahead and start? Yeah, so my name is Jason Auden. I've got a, a diverse background in, in sales and marketing and, and uh, technology. Uh, you know, and I really enjoy working with people on the messaging and the words. It's kind of fun to dig in and, uh, and get into it. So I really enjoyed this topic and looking forward to it today. Rudy? Um, so I'm, hi, I'm Rudy Poe, and uh, I'm kind of got a lot of, a lot of background in media production, all different kinds, everything from online to old school film and everything in between. And um, so I've done that and I've got some entrepreneurial background too. I've started a couple of different companies and I've gone through this process of, of what we're doing today a number of times and it's, <clears throat> it's not as easy as it seems. So well, I'm looking forward to this. Awesome. Thank you. Kelsey? Hey, I'm Kelsey Galarza, and um, I work with startups doing their, primarily their demand generation and sales outreach, so startups of all kinds of um, shapes and sizes, and uh, I've been a practitioner on the demand gen and the product management myself for many years, so I really know the power of getting this right. Awesome. Thanks, Kelsey. And just in time, it looks like Carrie just popped in. Carrie, you want to say hello? Introduce yourself real quick. I'm just in time, all, all the time. I think that's the, seems like the world I'm in these days. Uh, happy to be here and uh, look forward to, to hearing uh, people's thoughts and, and needs and ways we can, we can try to provide some additional perspective and always great to see our uh, OC4 community uh, in the flesh or virtual all right. these days. Thanks, Carrie. All right, so before we dive in, we're gonna do another surprise round where we have a guinea pig who has offered to give his value proposition for everyone. And I, Sean Weehan from Give Some, we have him on the line. Sean, take it away. Okay, so I'm hoping my internet will survive this. It's been a little spotty today. And in full disclosure, I want everybody to know that I did a Google search and found seven of the best value proposition examples we've ever seen. And then I copied some of it and tried to put it into our value proposition. So I cheated a little bit out of the gate, but I'm sure that I probably did it wrong. Um, so lots to learn today. So here's our value proposition. Give some. Empowering your service club to focus on serving. It only takes minutes to create pages for fundraising campaigns, charity events, and volunteer experiences, which you can quickly promote to your members and the broader community. As they participate, you can access donor data and financial records, all from a single location. The days of rounding up checks and cash are over, saving you time to focus on the real work of serving others. All right, that's it. Awesome. Thanks so much, Sean, for diving in as our, as our guinea pig for this session. And we'll, come, we'll circle back to you and see if you have any changes at the end and you want to go ahead and, and re, um, share it with the team. So, Great, we'll do. All right. Uh, I will go ahead and let Jason and Kelsey take it from here and start with our presentation. Thanks, Michelle, and great job, Sean. So I'm going to set the table here a little bit kind of about what is value and kind of give you the framework and uh, introduce this. So, you know, value is an interesting concept and it's something that I think everyone struggles with because on one hand, it's really obvious. It's just that 
you know, something has use or worth or meaning in general. But in marketing, value in the value proposition takes an extra layer where it really is about the innovation or feature of a product or a service that makes it attractive to customers or in some of our cases, investors as well. So that's really important that it's not just about making it valuable to some person, but it's how do you connect your product to the, the observer and value is always in the eyes, I think of the beholder. So there are many frameworks and templates for value. Uh, I pulled this one off Strategizer. I've seen this uh, more than most in the past couple of years, you know, not affiliated or anything like that, but it is a way of articulating how you can align a product or a service to a person. And it's really about matching the features or functions or just what it is that you do uh, to you know, what creates a gain for a customer or what relieves their pain. And in many cases, it's related to the jobs that a, a person or a customer might have. So, you know, what is it that they're trying to do that you can either help them do better, make it easier, or relieve some of what's challenging to them? And I think there's a very simple framework we want to present and then really start getting into some examples of how and why this works. And I don't know about you guys, but when I grew up, one of my favorite things was Mad Libs. And so I kind of present to you our Mad Libs style value proposition framework. And it's very simple. It goes something like this. It's our product or a company. And sometimes the product is a company and sometimes it's not. Uh, but this product is for who? Your customer. Who needs or wants something, whatever that is. And saying we provide whatever the solution is, unlike the alternatives or the competition, by only being different in some way. So on the, the face, I think this seems very simple, uh, but this takes a lot of work and fine tuning the words, you know, takes some, some deep introspection and thinking, I think. And this is also different from the elevator pitch. You know, the elevator pitch is really just trying to get somebody interested in the problem and saying, hey, we have a solution for you. This adds in some layers where we really start talking about who specifically it's for. It's not for the random person you met in the back of a taxi cab. It's for a specific audience. And you start to think about the, all, the com competition or alternatives so you can start to craft really durable differentiation. And you know, I think differentiation is a topic that we could have a workshop all on its own, but this really gets you to dig into a little bit more of those aspects. But also, this isn't your elevator pitch. You, know, you wouldn't necessarily take this and give it in an, in an elevator pitch or put it on your website. And what we're gonna do is that Kelsey's gonna jump into some examples and show some good, some bad, some ugly, and also how you can really use this effectively. Take it away, Kelsey. So um, I think that was a good uh, you know, segue and I really agree with Jason that it is a lot harder than it seems. Um, you know, your customer, it can't be every customer. Your solution, like boiling that down into a few words when you might have a robust software platform or something is, is really quite difficult. So um, we thought it would be helpful to give you a few examples. Um, the length is not necessarily critical, but you can see kind of a difference here where we see um, this was a real, uh, like a case study where they describe the difference between the proposition and the, and the positioning statement. So you can see one is much longer than the other. For individuals looking for high quality beverages, Coca-Cola offers a wide range of the most refreshing options. Each creates a positive experience for customers when they enjoy a Coca-Cola brand drink. Unlike other beverage options, Coca-Cola products inspire happiness and make a positive difference in customers' lives, and the brand is intensely focused on the needs of consumers and customers. So it kind of covers the Mad Libs very, very kind of precisely, right? You can see where each of those blanks were. And the words that they used um, have their own connotation so that you can see they talk about refreshing, positive, enjoy, happiness, positive again, right? So they're using some of their value words in here as well. Versus the Coke side of life is the simple sort of tagline version of, of it. Is that clear? Anything you want to add, Rudy or Jason? Yeah, this is good stuff, right? And this all stems, it's all very consistent. I think you'll, you'll see that. 
Okay, so I, let's go. Oh, go well, ahead. I was just going to say, I think a thing, uh, the thing too about their statement is they are very clear about who they are, right? So it's very much their their brand, their culture, and you can read that and you can catch that from that statement. So I think that's what they did a really good job of. Good, good. Okay, next page, if you wouldn't yeah, mind. Sorry. I saw Rudy came off mute, so I don't know. Oh, there he is. In. Oh, please. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I mean, there, there are two different, very different um, applications of, of a similar concept. So that's all I was going to say. So same thing here, right? Multiple um, applications. So your value proposition is not necessarily your tagline. So um, I don't remember Uber's uh, value proposition exactly, but they do have like kind of a longer one. But the tagline, the smartest way to get around, it is still a very simplified way of saying what it is they do. But as you can see with these taglines, they don't necessarily describe the for whom and how the how they're different. So just keep in mind that there really are there's multiple flavors of these things. And so the value proposition and, and Jason and Michelle and I had a little conversation about this earlier, and I'm very interested to see what what Rudy wants to add here is when we're talking about the value proposition is sort of the heart of of where all of these other pieces kind of spin off of the tagline spins off the elevator pitch could spin off your richer messaging could spin off but the value proposition really is the heart or like the touchstone for who you are who you do it for and how you do it do you guys want to add anything there i yeah. think oh sorry go ahead rudy so I was just, you said like sort of it, the, the tagline kind of spins off the value proposition. I mean, I don't, I don't know that that's the only way you think. You can also think of it the other way. I mean, I know just going through it with my own company, with our, my Just Food for Dogs company, we were, uh, our process was trying to come up with this tagline and it was like really hard. And then all of everything else developed from our tagline because we finally figured out a tagline that was right. So I don't think there's any right way to begin the process. It can go either that. way. I think totally a big agree. part of where it's the value proposition is the heart of your communication is when you when you put together a piece of, of marketing material or sales material, where does that value proposition come through? Where does it shine through? And if it's not there, then that's that could be, you know, an idea of oh, we need to incorporate that in. So I think that having that as a I, I call it like the skeleton or the backbones of your messaging. I think that'll be even more clear if you look at some more real examples in their kind of native um, home here on the next page. Can I, can I raise it? Oh, sorry, a, there's one more here. Go, oh, yeah. go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, I, I want to raise a question to the group, um, sort of in this vein of, uh, I mean, to me, the tagline is something that shows up a lot where, um, I mean, there should be, it should be architected, obviously, with the value proposition. You don't want them to be totally disconnected. Um, I'm not sure that the value proposition in its total form shows up uh, very all, often. Oh yeah. Okay. It, you know, very often. Right. Exactly. It, it should be very informative to um, everything else that you're doing is the way I would think about it. So it's a, it's a core asset, but it, it, you know, like who you're doing it for maybe more in the strategy of, of an execution of like, who you're reaching out to or how you're doing it. Um, and it's, it's, it's should be embedded in the, the people in the company, but, um, I guess I'd, I'd love thoughts of if people, you know, you don't need to agree if you agree, but like, you, how, how should I think any differently about that? I guess. It depends on your market. If, if the, if you're for, there are a few examples here, like if it's built for developers or for a small business, non-accounting person, that four comes through in some of these taglines and other ones of these, it's maybe not so important. So it, it, some of it does, the answer is it depends. Uh, but there are some times that we have some more examples coming up where you read it and you're like, I don't know what this is for. So sometimes you should think about that, but you're right. You would, I don't know that you would ever put your full value proposition framework like we have on your website, but it's sure going to influence every word you put on there. Yeah, I was going to say that we talked about this earlier where it's really first and foremost an, an internal message for you to make sure that you and your entire organization is aware of what that value proposition is. And then the marketing language itself is probably not going to be that in quotes, um, but it's going to derive from that. So, yeah. 
And I think that was exactly the point, Michelle, of this slide here, which was, it is not one-to-one -one with your, you know, your marketing. They empower one another. So if you have your, it's a, it's a one plus one equals three kind of equation here. Right, Jason? Yeah, I, liked, you I, liked your, I liked your image a lot. That very clearly uh, articulates that. Yeah. And, and you see, and by the way, messaging is everywhere in the real world, right? Every place you look, especially if you end up going to like trade shows or driving down the street or wherever, you see this stuff everywhere. And one thing that I was hoping that people would take away from this is to start to look for it. Because when you look around, there's great messaging and terrible messaging every place you look. And you should start to build your own taste of what you like and what you don't like to build your own style. I think some of the things that I always look for is, um, is, it, is it obvious what it is or does, right? So if, the, if you're looking at something like this, I like this Chicken Now logo up there. Um, I'm pretty sure I know exactly what they serve there, right? It's very clear. It is Chicken Now that is boneless and chicken tenders. Like, ta-da, no surprises here. Um, but the one sort of in the middle in the white, spend more time answering data questions and less time maintaining data infrastructure. Looks like it's for a technical person, but in that particular case, there was not even more information even further down to make it totally clear what this was or did. And so I was like, huh, that one, I, that one I would bounce away from, right? Bye, I don't know what you do. But the chicken, I'm gonna go in and have some chicken tenders. Sometimes there's nothing wrong with being real simple. All right. So do we want to figure out how we're going to have, uh, give some people some time, put up the rubric, and then figure out how we're going to share these with everybody. Yeah, let's put the Mad Libs back up. And then I think our intention is, um, we, I believe that we've decided that the easiest way to do it was for people to type it into the chat rather than trying to have people round robin and take turns. It's a little bit hard to do that. Um, so I think Michelle is going to be our Vanna and read out everybody's uh, value props. So go ahead and take, you know, five or eight minutes or so to think about it and um, type them in. So Kelsey, why is this all so important? Like, why did we go through this exercise? Well, as we talked about, um, you know, there's a lot of things that are other pieces of written or other um, communications that you may need to create that are related and use this, um, this route as a, as a heart of it. Um, the benefits of having this will allow you to create all of those other pieces of communication, whether they be written or verbal or video or social media or your sales presentations or your website or whatever it is to be consistent. So you're always kind of saying the same things. If you get them right, what it should do is help you acquire more customers. The people who see what you have should see themselves in it. Um, I always like to say like, you know, when, if you ever watch HGTV, you know, they stage the home so that you can imagine yourself in it. And so they don't say purple, you know, carpets and green walls, like that's hard to see yourself in. If you do it right, your customer sees themselves in your solution and buys it. Um, building block for your other messages of content, you just need to create all of these other pieces and make them be the same. And that's actually going to be our exercise for next week, is to be able to figure out how to build out your other messaging using what you've done here with your value prop to start. Um, but, but what we wanted to make sure that you did was kind of get this value prop in a condition where you feel like it can be the, the root of the rest of your messaging. And you need to do that by testing it. So some of you tested it with this little panel here tonight, but there's lots of ways that you can test your value proposition. Um, you can simply send it around to your friends and family and see if they understand it. Um, that is a lot easier than it sounds. And if you've done it well, your mother or your grandmother should be able to kind of get it. They may, not, they may not say, yes, I want it, but they should at least sort of be able to understand it. Um, there is ample opportunity to push this stuff out in social media and get feedback. Um, you can do that quite directly, or you could spend a few bucks and actually test it. And you could 
you know, use some, some piece of that to write little ads and see if people click on them. So um, there's, you know, just lots and lots of ways you can get feedback on this. Not the least of which is that any of the coaches will be happy to help you one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and I think and your last point here is great too, where you're just, you're never done, right? The stuff you're gonna obsess and test and go over it and you're gonna agonize over little word changes and wake up at 3 a.m. say, oh wait, this is the word we should use instead. Like this is not just a fill in the blanks and move on. This is like Michelle said, this is the heart of your company essence and messaging that will inform everything else that people actually see. Yeah, I think that's a really good point, Jason. And if you if you're going through like the exercise of building this out, I'm at least you're going to need to do it multiple times throughout the years of your business and the evolution of your business. So to prepare for next week, our next session, which is next Thursday, uh, build out your messages and we have a worksheet available that we will email out to you. Yep. Okay. And now what? If you are an OC4 member, you can schedule a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with any of our coaches here or any of the other coaches. And part three, building your sales messaging strategy is next Thursday at 4 p.m. So yeah, I got a little preview from Kelsey for next week, guys. It's going to be a great session. So do your homework. Come ready. I mean, this is now you're going to see the rubber meet the road next week. So come back. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, so I just wanted to say thank you to everybody for participating and putting yourself out there. And I look forward to seeing you all next Thursday. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye.